Hey everyone, welcome to another vlog. Now before we dive into this, I want to talk about meetups. If you do not know, I am doing meetups in Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore and Hyderabad. And here are the dates for that. Now this time, I am collaborating with Prodigy Finance for the meetups. If you do not know about Prodigy Finance, well, let me tell you. Prodigy Finance is a loan provider, especially for the international students who are coming for masters abroad. They have until now provided loans to 15,000 people and they do not require a collateral or a co-signer to get the loan and they do this whole process online. I'm gonna leave the link in the description so you can check it out. But they do meetups all across the world and I was like, I'm doing meetups at this location. Somebody reached out to me. It was fantastic and we are doing a collaboration now. Now the workshops or the meetups will cover everything. Starting abroad, covering TA, GA, RA, transitioning from India to US, everything so i'm gonna leave the registration links in the description go register for it you're gonna get all the details for meetups there we are still finalizing the location so bear with us on that but it's gonna happen soon and yeah let's just dive into the vlog again i think i've done introduction before only but i just showered up and this is one of the most awaited video for me because i really wanted this laptop and i wanted to review this laptop so in this video we're gonna review the macbook pro 2018 15.4 inches version i bought this laptop three weeks ago and the price of it i'm gonna leave the link in description i paid a fortune for it that's all i'll say right so this is a 15.4 inches laptop it's extremely thin for a 15.4 inches laptop and extremely lightweight as well. There are four USB-C ports, including one 3.5 mm jack. They still have it in this one. I don't know when they're going to remove it. Two USB-C ports here as well. If I lock the screen, there's a place where it says unlock with touch ID. So there's a touch ID which you can use to unlock rather than typing your codes in. Now, the previous laptop which I was using was a 2015 MacBook Air. The reason why I bought a MacBook Air is because I had a 15 inch Sony laptop which was extremely heavy, it, I think it was like 2.3 kilos so that is heavy, very heavy but I bought this one and I'm, I was pretty happy with it but the kind of video editing I was doing was too much and even with the normal browsing and everything the computer was lagging. I tried formatting it and I've done everything which I could have done to clear it up but the software which I was using were too heavy to use it. The first question and I'm sure there will be hate comments on this video that why didn't you buy a Windows laptop? You could buy two Windows laptops for this price. But the reason why I bought this is because the purpose why I wanted a laptop, it solves that purpose. Whenever you're buying a new machine, you always have to ask yourself what purpose is this machine going to solve? So for me, main was that I know that I'm going to get a computer from the company or I was going to get a computer at the university with all the softwares. So I didn't really need a computer for the softwares, but I needed the computer for editing and normal browsing and just putting in my photos and doing normal assignments. If your main purpose is that you're going to use a software like Rhino or you're going to use a software like Revit or you're going to use a software like, I don't know, some other softwares in computer science or mechanical or industrial, then you should buy that laptop. And I don't have anything against Windows laptop, but I personally prefer MacBook because I've been using it for four years and it is extremely reliable. I'll tell that to you that it has never hanged in front of other people. That's a big embarrassment when you're buying a new computer. I can easily work on it for six, seven hours minimum on the new Pro. Now to talk about the specs of this computer, it is the 15.4 inches version with a i7 processor of 2.3 gigahertz and there's a 16 GB RAM and 256 GB SSD. I'm gonna link the exact model so that you can check the specs as well. The reason why I didn't go for the 512 version is because it was adding up $300 on my budget. I didn't have that kind of money. A normal hard disk, like a 4TB hard disk, normal hard disk, not a SSD one, is around $100. But if you want a 500 GB SSD is $100. So it's obviously worth it to get an external one rather than getting a big internal one. Now moving on, the touch bar, the major change which has has been done in the MacBook Pro. Rather than having a big touch screen on all of your screen on the main screen, I think it's pretty stupid. It takes up a lot of battery and if you're 
doing a lot of typing it doesn't make sense to have that if you are a person who likes that kind of computer i would rather recommend to go for surface book or go for an ipad and just buy another keyboard because i feel like if i can really work well with the trackpad and i can really work with this touch screen so this is just a small strip of digital like a digital panel where it changes with different softwares you're using for example if i'm gonna open safari right now as you can see here there's different tabs which i often open when i go to let's see tesla enhance anti-theft video okay i can scroll through the video that is pretty cool for example if i open word then it'll give me all the features here bold italics um, if you want to color a text, if you want to highlight the text, I would say it's definitely better than a full touch screen, which takes up a lot of, of your battery. And this kind of variation is great. Now talking about the keyboard. So this is the keyboard, the travel, like the thickness of the keyboard is very less as compared to the prior one. And they have removed the all function keys and put the touch bar here. Now they have introduced this new butterfly keyboard, uh, which is a lot quieter and it's apparently faster but i'm still getting used to it i can't say much in the 2016 and 2017 version if you are planning to buy even like a second hand version of it or a refurbished version of it see one thing so the keyboard here uh, in 2016 and 2017 doesn't have a membrane this membrane prevents the dust from or the dirt from getting in the keyboard the reason why i'm telling you this is because a lot of people were having problems that the keys which they wanted to use were not working because the dirt was getting in in the 2018 version they have introduced a thin membrane which prevents it from happening moving on the trackpad huge 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 trackpad i would say like i i've never seen a bigger trackpad than this I'm still having problems with it. I'm gonna complain a lot in this video, but I'm still having problems with it. The reason being when I have my hand like this while I'm typing, then see, do you see this, um, my palm touching this keyboard? So I'm still getting used to it, keeping my hands like this rather than like this. It will take me time, but I'll get used to it. Moving on to the battery. Now, as compared to the MacBook Air right here, the battery is not as good. This mush, this thing is actually made for long-term use for business people, for professionals who don't have time to even charge the battery. For them, MacBook Air is great, but it lasts like 10 hours uh, if you're just watching movies and if you're doing normal browsing. But MacBook Pro, I think it is lasting me like six to seven hours maximum if I'm doing browsing and watching movies, not more than that. Talking about the speakers here, Fabulous, fabulous speakers. Let me play something for you. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Pretty loud for a computer. And it's stereo speakers, so I can feel uh, the sound going from one speaker to this other speaker, which is pretty great. Now, if we move on and we talk about the heating issues, the big issue which a lot of people who had a MacBook Pro prior to this the 2016 17 version and even the 18 version we're having so due to the thin laptop the thin thin extremely thin obviously apple is a lot on aesthetics and not on the functionality they want to make the laptop beautiful that's the thing if i'm gonna see this laptop even after four years i'm gonna see it as a beautiful tech which i just bought rather than thing which is thing of past so because of such thin laptop the fan is right here and it gets heated up a lot when you're using like photoshop archicad or if you're using final cut pro the video editing software which i use on it it gets heated up a lot and they tried improving it with the software update but i still feel like it gets a bit heated up can't complain because you're putting so much load on such a thin machine it's gonna happen next thing usb-c the ports right here ports on this side two on this side and two on this side now i'm gonna tell you one thing and i'll be very honest with you the phone i'm using usb-c the action camera i'm using usb-c the computer i'm using is usb-c what do you see here 
USB-C is the future. It's gonna be everywhere. It's faster data transfer rate. It's like flippable. And I actually like it, except for the fact that you might trip on the wire and your laptop might flow off the table. That is a bad thing. And I really miss the Mac safe. But other than that, USB-C has been great. So I had two hard disks, which I switched to, like I just got new wires for it, which are USB-C as well. The only problem which I face while on the USB-C is when I'm shooting on this camera, I'm using a SD card. And for that, I have to have this dongle. Also for the HDMI port, I have to have this dongle. So it's not as bad, but I, I don't actually have a complaint. I thought I would have complaint with USB-C, but since I had a phone with USB-C, it makes my life easier. Carry one charger for your camera, for your computer, for your phone, best thing ever. Last question, the major question or the question of the year comes is, is this computer worth it? If it is solving the purpose you bought it for, anything is worth it. If your phone is solving the purpose you bought it for, maybe the camera, maybe the phone, or maybe you just want to browse internet on your phone and it is solving the purpose, it is worth it. So for me, the main purpose why I bought this computer is because I wanted to buy a machine which would last me four years, which would let me edit videos in 1080p, which I'm doing right now actually. And this machine is helping me do that faster. It is saving me at least an hour in every edit while rendering, while processing. I can play with more clips as compared to less clips before. So for me, it is completely worth it. For a student who's coming from India, I would definitely not recommend it. You can go for a 13 inch version, which is like $1,200, or you can just go for a Windows laptop, which is even cheaper. And there are some great machines and I'm not in a fight. I like the Apple ecosystem and that's why I'm here. I don't like iPhones and that's why I use Samsung. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I think that sums up with my extensive, extensive review of the MacBook. Pro, I hope I didn't bore you, but stay tuned for the LinkedIn video this Friday. And that's it. I'm gonna head out, go for a coffee with Ram and edit this video because I have to post it tonight. Lot of travel this month. Stay tuned and I'm gonna talk to you more about on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe.